Think you've created every type of sleeve? I'm Tova with Professor Pincushion and today I'm going to show you how to create the tulip sleeve. The tulip sleeve's delicate look comes from two sides of the sleeve overlapping each other. We're going to cover how to alter a sleeve pattern that you may already own to create a pattern for a tulip sleeve. We'll also go over the construction of this type of sleeve. Want to add a tulip sleeve to a bodice you're already making? You could totally do it. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is convert my sleeve pattern in order for it to be in the style of a tulip sleeve. So we're going to take this, and this is just a standardized short sleeve pattern, and I'm going to split it up into two pieces in order to make the tulip sleeve. So you're going to take your pattern, and you're just going to flatten it out with a cool iron best you can, and then you're going to lay some tracing paper over it. Now I'm going to do that at a later point, but I just want you to be able to see the pattern clearly so you know exactly what I'm doing. So if you were to take this pattern and basically cut it in half, it's going to look pretty symmetrical. The difference is we have a double notch on this side and a single notch on this side. This indicates it's the back of the sleeve, this indicates that it's the front of the sleeve. So we're gonna take it in that same account and separate it into the back and the front. You also notice that you have some dots. You should have three of them like I do for each size. So I have one here, one here, one here. These dots are actually meant to help you ease the cap of the sleeve into the armhole, which we'll get into later. But for now, I'm just gonna use it as a foundation for splitting up my pattern. So we're gonna imagine I have tracing paper over this, and I'm going to measure the distance between the center dot and the side dot, and I'm going to split that in half, and I'm going to make a mark on my cutting line. So I would do it on the size 10 line here. Then at the bottom of the sleeve, so I'm going to the opposite side. So I can either go this way or I can go this way. It's the same thing, but I'm just gonna do the back first. So I make my mark here, I go to the opposite side to the bottom of the sleeve. Now from this edge on the hemline or on the hem, I'm gonna go in about two inches. You can go a little bit more, you can go a little bit less, but before you know what you like, I would just start with two inches. So here I'm gonna mark two inches then from this point where I marked it, I'm gonna draw a smooth curve to the mark that I made on the cutting line over here. So here's my first line that I'm drawing. The important thing you wanna remember is this curved line here, and I just eyeballed it, so yours may look a little bit different than mine, is when it comes to meeting with this line down here, which is the bottom of the sleeve, you don't end up with a weird angle that it's a nice smooth curve. Now everything to the left of this line of my pattern, I'm going to draw. So I'm gonna finish drawing the top of the sleeve cap along here, making sure to do my double notches and then doing the underarm line. So here's my first pattern that I created is the tulip sleeve is the back because we have the double notches and that I'm going to cut to just like I would for a normal sleeve. Any markings that you have that fall within your pattern that you just created, such as the notches, or the ease dots and make sure you do the one for your size, you're going to wanna to transfer to your tracing paper pattern. Now I'm going to repeat the process in order to create the tulip sleeve of the front. So before I was going in this direction and now I'm gonna be going in this direction. So the same thing, I'm just going between these two dots, finding the distance and doing it in half. So it should be relatively the same thing. Then I'm going in two inches and I'm gonna draw a smooth curve in between. Now, if you wanna make sure that your curve is the same from the front and the back, you can take your front or your back, just flip it over so you're seeing the reverse. And obviously this is gonna go underneath this tracing paper. So it'd go pattern, back, tracing paper. And again, this is the reverse. And I could just lay it on top of my pattern and just draw the curved portion of it. Then from the curve, I'm gonna draw my pattern, everything to the right of that, including my single notch, and then any E circles I have. Here is my outline now for the front, and I'm going to, again, cut two out of my fabric, and I have all my marks transferred. Now, if we were to take our back, and I'm going to overlap them, 
just like I would with my fabric pieces eventually when I'm sewing it together. I'm going to line up the center mark here. And so that's what's going to be creating the style of the tulip sleeve because they're going to be overlapping each other. Just to make sure that when I am trying to overlap it, I'm going to add some more marks to my pattern. And it could be anything you want really. But I'm going to go ahead and make a box. So I'm going to, let's say, at the end of this one, I'm going to do a box. Don't make it completely on the edge. Go in about 5 eighths of an inch. So now when I lay this on top, I can now do a box on this pattern. And I could do the same thing on this side too. So maybe I'll do another box here. I just want to make sure that they're going to line up the same way. And then I'm going to reverse. So this is going to be on the bottom. This is going to be on top. And I can go ahead and transfer this mark to my front. So here are some extra marks. You can even, instead of doing these two, maybe do one down here if you wish. It's really up to you. You can do a notch. Whatever's going to make it easier for you. But once you have all your marks and you have your two sides, you can go ahead and cut it out of your fabric. So I'm not cutting out of my fabric looking like this. I'm taking the front, cutting two out of that, and then taking the back and cutting two out of that. After you have your fabric pieces cut out, we can then move on to the assembly. And I'm going to demonstrate doing it for one sleeve, but obviously you're going to do it for both sleeves. The hem is usually done at the very end once the sleeve has already been put into the garment. But with this particular type of sleeve, I'm actually going to do a partial hem now. So I flip my pieces over so I'm looking at the wrong side. And the hem could be any measurement that you want. I'm going to keep mine pretty simple. So I'm just, for now, I'm going to fold up a quarter of an inch all along the curved edge here and here for the front and back. So if we were to look at our pattern, it's going to be this curved edge here. So I'm going to fold up a quarter of an inch. I'm going to pin it. Again, it's just from here to here. And I'm going to press it. And I'll do the same thing for this one. After it's pressed, I'm then going to fold it up another quarter of an inch, pin it, and press it. I'm going to start sewing part of my hem. So I'm going to start here at this point part, so right along the edge of the hem, and then I'm going to stop about two inches from when I get to the underarm seam. So I'm going to stop about right here where the notch is. Same thing on this side. So I'm going to start here and then stop when I get to the notch. I'm going to leave this part pinned. I'm not going to sew on these ends here because we're going to finish that once these two, two seams are sewn together to make up the underarm seam, and then we'll finish the hem. I'm stitching right on that folded edge to create my narrow hem. Just doing a regular straight stitch and don't forget to back stitch. Flip your pieces over so that you're looking at the right side. And then I'm going to take one back and one front and I'm going to place them on top of each other. So your marks line up. So it's going to kind of look like the way that pattern was when we overlapped them. And I usually like to do the back on top of the front, but you can do it the other way around too if you want. Once the raw edges are lined up and all your marks are lined up, you can go ahead and pin it and then we're just going to do a basting stitch just in this area just to hold our two pieces together without pins. I'm just doing the basting stitch for the area where my front and back overlap. You just do the longest stitch on your machine. You don't have to do any back stitching because this is just a temporary stitch just to hold these pieces together. I did my basting stitch at a half inch away from the raw edge. So now it's one piece and we can just treat it like a normal sleeve now. So the next step would be to do our gathering basting stitches. So you're going to start at one notch. And you're going to do one basting stitch. And again, it's going to be the longest stitch and there's not going to be any back stitching. So I'm going to do that at the 5 eighths of an inch or whatever your seam line is to my other notch. And then I'm going to do another basting stitch at the 3 eighths line, again, from notch across the top to notch. Once you have both those basting stitches in, you can go ahead and remove this first one we did because we no longer need it since those other two basting stitches are holding the pieces together. Next, we're going to sew the underarm seam together. So remember we folded this up in order to create the hem. I'm going to go ahead and remove my pins 
because we don't want it folded up when we do that seam. So I'm going to take it out for both sides and then I'm just going to unfold it. And once the seam is created, we can refold it and then finish doing the, the hem. So I'm going to unfold it. This is still right side up. So I'm going to bring the two sides right side together, matching up the ends and the raw edges. And then I'm going to sew the seam that's designated on my pattern. So for mine, since it's a commercial pattern, it's going to be a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm doing a regular length straight stitch and I'm doing a back stitch on both ends. Once I finish with this, I can go ahead and press my seams open. With the underarm seam done, you can go ahead and refold the hemline and then you can go ahead and finish stitching that into place. The last step is putting your sleeve into your armhole. And again, you're just tackling it just like it's a regular inset sleeve. So here's my bodice and one armhole here that I've already put together. Here's a shoulder seam, here's the side seam, and then this is the armhole, double notch, single notch. So you wanna make sure that matches up with your sleeve. So I have this right side out, and we're looking at the wrong side of the bodice because then when I stick my sleeve inside here, it's gonna be right side to right side. And I'm just going to match everything up. So remember I had three dots on my sleeve cap. So I have one here, I have one in the middle, and then I will have one on the end. You should also have dots on your bodice that you'll be matching up. Usually the one that's in the center is going to go right on the shoulder seam. So I'm going to line that up. And I'll just throw a quick pin in here. And then I have two more dots on my bodice here. Here's one here. So this is going to go with this dot. And you may notice that you have a little bit extra sleeve than you do for the area for the armhole. So that's when you're going to start pulling your basting stitches just to kind of ease everything into place. So I'm not trying to create a gathering. I'm just trying to just bring it in a little bit so it's going to match a little bit better and everything's going to line up. And then the underarm seam for my sleeve is going to match the side seam and I'm going to match all the notches. So again, it's going to go right side to right side. And once you have everything pinned into place, then you can go ahead and create your seam that goes all the way around the armhole. When you finish putting in your sleeve, don't forget to check the right side and see if you need to remove any basting stitches if they're showing. Also, don't forget you're going to repeat this process for the sleeve on the other side. And now you have a new option for creating a unique sleeve. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.